I called him three times, and every time I tried to discuss this like a mature person, pay me or I'm going to whoop your ass. That's what I got. So tell me about this in your cross-complaint. You talked about Mr. Robinson bad-mouthing you to the fraternity, but you also mentioned that he started rumors about you. Yeah. Which turned a lot of people against you. What rumors? To tell the people that I can't drive, to tell the people that I caused an accident. None of this stuff is true. They turned against me because they thought that I wasn't trying to pay him any money, I wasn't trying to do anything. And that's why they looked at me and said, and this is a quote, you look real bad to the frat right now, bro. Yana, the same people that he's talking about in our fraternity told me personally, she has been in other accidents before. And it was a long time before he was even able to get another vehicle. She Wait, told but me you're that. a Lyft driver. Right. What she are the requirements for those? I'm assuming that they'd want a clean record. Yeah, so guess what? The accident that he's referring to, I've never caused an accident. But I was hitting the back again when I was a Lyft driver. And he's right, I lost my car. Because the people and the other insurance people took a long time, so I lost my car. I couldn't pay for it during the coronavirus. He's absolutely right. But I never caused an accident. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, this is defamation. All right, I'm good. All right, there's kind of an elephant in the room because the insurance company did an analysis mm -hmm. and they determined that at least for this accident, you were at fault. Have you seen that? No. All right, if you go to plaintiff's evidence, this is an initial fault summary, concluding that the truck that was backing out is 100% at fault for the accident. So would it have mattered if Mr. Robinson had applied to Lyft, filled out these documents? They simply would have said, sorry, your fault. This yeah, you're right. For you're right. But again, I did not know that was occurring. That's why I wanted to get an insurance estimate. That's Understood. why I wanted Lyft. Today was the to first day you were aware. First day. All right, I have no further questions. We're going to excuse you while we deliberate in this case. Thank you very much. Court is now in recess. My thoughts are this is a pretty straightforward one legally. I think that Mr. Hudson was, first of all, at fault for the accident. Doesn't matter if he hit the front half or the second half, he backed out of a parking spot and hit the car. I think he's responsible for the deductible yes. that Mr. Robinson was out of pocket. It is absurd to hold him responsible for anything more. And I don't see a basis for the defamation claim, but I'd like to hear the two of your thoughts, being more familiar with the fraternity well, sorority system. I, I was concerned with his last comment that he's either a bad driver or a deadbeat. What makes it unusual is the whole purpose of the attorney is a very social network. Right. So this thing spreads like wildfire. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing that concerns me. But what do you have to say? I don't think that Mr. Hudson proved defamation today. Mr. Robinson had an opinion about Mr. Hudson, and he can say what he wants in terms of this incident and in, in describing how it went down from his perspective. In the sense that the comments did not rise to the level... At all. ...of defamatory? No. There's no statement of fact that's being asserted. At all. Defamation suit, I would dismiss. And he was willing to pay the deductible, and that's all that we should hold him to. Well, well the thing that also ran through my mind was I thought that his lawsuit for $3,000 when he was fully paid by the insurance company was at the least frivolous and demonstrates a state of mind and attitude towards the defendant that could lead one to think that he would have maliciously spread these negative comments. So here's what I'm going to do. I feel that there was defamation, but it's offset by the $1,000 that he owes. I don't think I could get on board with the defamation. I think rumors circulating around a fraternity alumni community that somebody was a bad driver. <laughs> Malicious gossip. Yes, doesn't to me <laughs> rise to the level of compensable defamation. I'm in agreement with Judge Juarez on this. I do believe that because he's at fault per the insurance company's investigation, that he is entitled, the plaintiff, to the deductible that he had to spend, and no more than that. I think there was defamation, but I dissent. And in this brothership, we welcome dissenters. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs>